Leo, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, playing out with the d new default workspaces in 2.8, but more around <laughs> about that in a minute. The focus of today is time for another call for content slash feedback. This time for Studio Lights. So we made a call for content already twice. Uh, we made one for the matcaps uh, first, then we made one for workspaces, the ones that we have here. And the third call for content we're going to do now is for studio lights. What are they? Well, they are basically a way to light your scene without actually changing the lighting on your, on your scene. So yeah, similar to matcaps, well, no, because matcaps actually is a texture applied to your model. So it changes everything how it looks. So Studio Lights only changed the lighting. So let's see it in, in, in action. So I'm gonna load this file without the load UI so I can show off the new default workspaces. And uh, well, here I'm in modeling. So if you're in shading, you will be in the look depth mode or in the material, uh, the little icon up here that, that shows the shaders. So this, um, this view lets you see the shaders with the lighting of your scene, or you can override with different lighting from images. So image-based lighting, so it's pretty cool. Um, here in this file, I have disabled the uh, scene lights. So without, I will only see the studio lights. So what are they? Basically they are HDR images, so high dynamic range images that are um, that you can map on your scene they're mapped automatically and you can rotate around and you can rotate them as well with the rotation um, slider up here and you can see how your how your model will look in different lighting situations which is very nice for example this file doesn't have any other lighting well there's some bloom here let's turn it off um, any other lighting than the one provided by this EXR there are a few already included now as, you, as of today. If you download the Blender 2.8 uh, experimental build from today, there is one for like a forest kind of uh, kind of thing. Then there is one which is like a, um, let me enable, disable everything except that look that. Did you know you can click, drag everywhere and then you can turn on and off everything at once. That's pretty cool. And then only look that. So you can see how do they look. So for example, this one, it's a um, dark, very um, little speculars, nice for uh, when you want to see a lot of noise in the speculars. Uh, it's a nice example. Then there's this one, which is more like a noon-ish. Um, here you can't really tell, but if you use this, uh, because right now Eevee doesn't uh, add shadows based on the HDR for the time being. But uh, Cycles does, for example. So if you use this image as a uh, image environment image on Cycles, you will see that the shadows are much more um, more diffuse. Then there is one that is called Studio Light. So you can see it with a typical um, three point lighting. Also very nice with strong rim light. And there is one that is more like a sunset. Um, it's a bit more color information, so you can't really uh, fully trusted, but it's good to see your model in different, uh, fully trusted in the sense that it's, if, your op if your material is fully gray, like this little ball here, they look that little preview, then you'll see that there is some color information. So what's, uh, what's the deal with this? Well, it's just to have some variation, some HDR images that will ship with Blender, as small as possible, but still useful. So in this case, the images are like 1K for by 5.12. And, but the important part is that they are full float. They're 32 bit. So that way Blender can make use of it. And um, the, the sun, for example, will look, will, will have sharper shadows or you can play, you have a lot more room to play with it. So if you want to contribute or give feedback, you should do so by going to the DevTalk forum, just the same way we did it before. There is this nice thread. There is a little Bible that I wrote, sorry, it's a bit long, but basically what are studio lights? How can you see the ones that are available right now? The plan. So the plan, as I explained it right now, it's uh, to have variation. So for example, exterior day, night, studio, and there is one that we don't have built in at the moment, is a clear color. 
So if you want to see the reflections on your, uh, like, like very clear reflections on your model, with this ones you really can't because they're actual photos. So they're, they introduce noise. So maybe it's a good idea. Um, I don't know, it's just an idea to have something that it's um, super like clean, uh, but it still shows some variation. So you can, you can judge your reflective surfaces better. So this is more or less, you can read the, the thread. Uh, here are the images that I just posted. Uh, this is basically how it looks. How do they look with the settings that I was uh, testing? And the, um, let's hide this. And just questions for you, like, what do you think of this, these candidates? Do you like them? No, do you have a better replacement? If so, please post it. And if we are missing any category. So the idea is to have, yes, between five, maybe 10 maximum. These five images that are included right now are like around one megabyte of size added to the Blender installer, which is arguably, I mean, Blender is small, so it's not really that much, but it, we shouldn't add just for the sake of it, right? We should try to keep Blender as small as possible and maybe keep um, a, like a second selection of uh, images available online for in the future with the asset manager, for example. That would be a great, great way of making use of this asset manager when we have it in the future. So uh, yeah, contributing at least 4K just to be future proof so we can in the future, if Blender um, like we, we can basically, so we can up, upgrade them in the future if needed. And then yeah, 32 bit for the nice, um, uh, nice shadows and sharp shadows and the very strong sun and a lot of um, range to play with it. So yeah, that is it for, uh, for these videos, mainly for the mod, for the call for content for the studio lights. There, these lights, the moment you add them, they're also available here in the studio uh, setting in the lighting, but they are yet to be, um, these are not meant to work perfect. <laughs> I think um, if you're painting, for example, you want something that has a little color variation. So for these specific lightings, if you have any suggestions, any image that will work very well here for the diffuse lighting, um, also post it, feel free to post it because it's very good, uh, very good to have it, but we might make another call in the future just for this, or even tweak the shader itself just to make it a bit more interesting. There were some posts concerning texture painting, how when you texture paint with these images, how do it doesn't always give you the real feedback about what you're painting on. So I'm going a bit off topic, but yeah, what you see here is the new default workspaces. This is the first iteration. If you don't like it, it, you can provide feedback. The thread is still open, but this is just a way of having Blender when you first open Blender that is not empty and also a way to let people know what they can do with Blender just out of the box. So imagine if you open Blender for the first time, you are in modeling, so you know you can do modeling, which is usually the first thing you do when you start. But if you're a 2D animator, for example, or you, you're interested in it, and then you see, oh, there's a 2D animation workflow that, well, happens to have a very nice white background, so you can immediately start working um, in it. With already the dope sheet, for example, with the, with the grease pencil um, section on already for adding keyframes. Then there is a 3D animation, which is basically a similar layout, same outliner, same width of the property, same height of the animation editor. I tried to um, keep the feedback from the workspaces, but adding some more restrictions in a way, in the sense that the width, the height of the editor should stay similar, uh, close to similar on the, um, on all the editor. For example, if there is an animation editor should be on the same place, same orientation, and then um, the, the rest should follow. So yeah, this is um, the motion tracking thing is gonna change as uh, Sebastian Kuhn has some feedback on it. The rendering one still is not, there's not the option to like when you render to switch to, to this rendering um, workspace. That would be a very nice plan. The scripting, 
all about the text. So it's all about what you see. <laughs> and then you can also type, type, type some stuff and get um, the autocomplete and then the operators results show up down here. Sculpting, it's, well, let's, uh, for example, let's see with an actual file. So yeah, when you open a, um, when you open a file, you'll see that it will have its own workspaces. It will come with it. But if you want to keep your own workspaces and still open the file, you can still use the load UI button down here that you can press and it will load the, the blend file without the UI, uh, without the, the interface uh, elements from that blend file. So you can still have modeling. If you go to sculpting, you will have the matcap, this default matcap with some um, cavity uh, settings in it. So you can already start sculpting right away. Um, maybe the overlay should be hidden when, when switching in, in the sculpting um, workspace. Also, for example, this is already with the toolbar collapse, so it doesn't use a lot of space. On one side, you have the modifiers for sculpting, and the other side, you have all the tool settings for these brushes. Uh, when you go to shading, um, right now it takes a little bit uh, longer because it's loading the textures and then the shaders, but there will be work done, so it, it loads first the scene, like just, just like it, then it loads the textures and then it loads the shaders. So they are, so it's a bit faster. So when you're switching from one to the other, the first time it's not as slow. Texture paint, it's all about the painting, paint settings also here available. UV editing is very similar to the texture paint because you want to see both. But, um, but yeah, of course they have different tools available at the same time and then video editing as well. Um, in this file, I didn't uh, save it, but the workspaces that don't need the, the top bar can hide it because there's also a new option now in the window uh, um, window menu to hide or show the status bar. And this is a setting that is per workspace. So it's gonna stay with it. So if you don't need the uh, status bar or the top bar in a specific workspace, you can do so, you can save it. So, okay, too many things in one video. I should have made two videos, sorry, but I just was too excited to show this. Please contribute to your uh, studio lights and uh, thanks for uh, being part of this of making Blender 2.8 together again. So it went really well with the workspaces. This is a work in progress. The workspace is the first iteration. We're gonna keep improving them. Please provide feedback here in the um, workspaces thread on, the, on DevTalk point the things that you think should change or not or the um, for example most of the most of the editors have disabled the motion tracking overlays for example because it makes more sense in the motion tracking workspace so that way you hide a lot of things that you, they're not needed so if you have any feedback on that please leave it there if you want to see the um, the images that are um, that are included with Blender, the, the studio lights, you can go to the, where you compile, when, when, where you compile, when you run Blender, there is a data file studio lights world um, folder, and then you can see the EXRs, and then you can open them with, um, with a, a modern uh, image editor, you can open them there, right there. So yes, okay. Too, too long of a video, but it's been a while. We haven't talked in a while. Uh, I will see you in the thread and uh, as well, as always, in the next video. Ciao.